in program dedicated to developing local and regional creative makers professionally and artistically. Her poems and essays have appeared in national literary journals and anthologies. Most recently in the book called Rid Rooted, the best new arboreal nonfiction published this year. She's a longtime teacher of writing in colleges, schools, and community settings. So Lori's going to finish out um, the class today. So welcome, Lori. Yeah. I'm, I'm the reason that you all have a white card. Yay. Now that you've been thinking about what a community is, maybe what it, how you define a community, you're all part of six or seven person communities, Whoville and Asphalt and Coffeeville and all the places that I heard earlier. Could you put on your card five communities that you are a part of? You personally, this is just for you. Um, do you believe that Kansas Wesleyan is a community and you belong to it? If so, put that down. Maybe you're a member of your hometown community, or maybe there's a, another town, maybe you didn't grow up there, but it feels like yours. Get at least five communities down, would you please? like your theater program that collaborates with Salina Community Theater. Really strong local program. The Steeple Theater. Have any of you been to a concert at the Steeple Theater downtown? I'm going to trip myself over this thing. Um, yeah, it, a very strong venue for performing arts, mostly music, but other things too. Um, the Salina Art Center. Have you been to the Salina Art Center downtown? Visual arts, absolutely strong national reputation for contemporary visual arts. Um, the Salina Arts and Humanities Commission, which is part of our city government. Do you know how rare that is? It's so rare that a town has, as part of its city, like the fire department, like the police department, like the parks department, it has an arts and culture department. 
And Salina has that, and if you're here in the summer, you know that it does the Smoky Hill River Festival, which is all of the arts, over four days in the park. So I'm just trying to convince you that Salina's arts organizations and cultural organizations, many of which I haven't named, are really strong. But the, who do they need in order to do good work? Artists. They need people who are creative makers in order to do the work that they do. And so over the years, we haven't paid enough attention to the individual artist. Um, I hear all the time when I'm out and about, Salina is such a great town for the arts. And I always finish the sentence, organizations. I always put that word at the end with the period. It is a great town for arts organizations. But speaking as an individual artist, I had to go elsewhere to get my training. I had to go somewhere to go to grad school to study my um, area of writing because it wasn't available here, because although I have mentors here, I needed more, and so I had to go somewhere else. So here's what happened over this summer. We wanted collaboratively to deal with this problem. Um, why should we care? I want to like back up half a step. Why should we care about whether artists are developed in Salina, or anywhere we're going to live? Why should we care? Whether the individual painter, sculptor, musician, dancer, actor is developed. What do artists bring to our communities? What is creativity? Just what you did, you were creatively thinking when you were making your collaborations. So artists are creative problem solvers, and every community needs creative problem solvers. What's another reason that we should care about artists being developed? Just as much as doctors are developed, you know, they're trained, they keep getting more training. The way accountants are developed, they're trained, they keep getting... Why, why artists? Why should artists have the same thing? Say again? Culture. Talk to me about culture. That is so smart. Did you hear what she said? Yes, it creates culture and it creates, I'm going to piggyback on what I think you're saying, cultural diversity. And if we aren't diverse, we're dying and we're dead. If we aren't talking to each other and having those conversations. The other thing that I think artists do is they think really interestingly about materials and processes. For instance, I know of a project not in Salina, but uh, someone, an artist who makes sculpture, was very concerned with homelessness in the city where he was living. He's an artist. What's he going to do about homelessness? He built, as a sculptor, small foldable shelters that people could get from him to live in when it was cold. And he used his sculptural skills and made them beautiful and made them sensitive to both the community, to the individual body that would be inside it. Um, there's another artist who was a fashion designer, also concerned about homelessness. She created a whole line of clothing that sort of unfolds into a shelter. So during the day, you can wear it as a puffy jacket and at night you can flip it open, zip it around in different ways, and you are protected from the elements. That's creative thinking, that's thinking about materials, and that's thinking about processes, and it's also dealing with this idea of culture and building culture. So here's the thing. This summer, we decided how can we help artists develop to bring this kind of creative thinking, this kind of cultural diversity and cultural development, and this kind of thinking about materials and processes to Salina in a way that it hasn't been here for a while, if ever. And we got a lot of people together. CKF is an addictions treatment um, organization in Salina. DVAC is a shelter for victims of domestic violence. CAPS is an organization that supports families and children. Um, Salina Art Center, Salina Arts and Humanities and Artists. Uh, they're in the middle because that's my focus. And then these two groups, the Salina Downtown Group, which um, is a private nonprofit that works with all the downtown merchants to make our downtown more vibrant and to make it more successful, and the city of Salina. This isn't all of our partners. These are just the ones I can sort of talk to you about quickly. We decided, what can we do to 
serve and what are the what are the problems in our community or what are the opportunities in our community and so now we have what is called spark artist resource exchange spark is what it is it's an image it's it's the you know the hot bright flash of getting something started um, and here's what we're going to do we're going to infuse local artists into the redevelopment of downtown salina did you know in the spring they're going to tear up Santa Fe and you won't be able to drive down Santa Fe? You'll have to use the alleys to get into all the businesses downtown and the restaurants. Think about that as an artistic opportunity. How are we going to guide people into the alleyways? How are we going to get them in the back door? And why do they want to go there? Oh, well, guess what? There are, there are musicians busking at the back door one night. There are murals in the back alleys. There are self-guided tours that make you look up at the second stories of those buildings and think about their uh, architecture. All of those are artistic projects. I'm just making those up now. They don't exist yet, but artists will come to us with those kind of proposals. So that's how we're working with downtown redevelopment. Also putting artists to work doing what they do. Then we have these groups who are working with people in need. Somehow they're in life crisis. If you're a victim of domestic violence, if you are struggling with some kind of substance addiction, you and you're seeking help, you have acknowledged that you are in a life crisis. So artists and people in a life crisis, these organizations came to us as we were putting this, this uh, grant through the Greater Slime Community Foundation together and said, you guys, we want to work with artists so much. We want to have an artist in our group therapy. We want to have an artist in our domestic violence shelter. But we don't know who they are. We don't know how to work with them. And we don't have any money to employ them. So we wrote into our grant ways to do those things. To bring creative people into those kind of social service, health, um, and recovery organizations so that they can uh, experience the way creating facilitates openness to healing. Not therapy, but to facilitate openness to other kinds of healing that can happen. So that's an example, and um, the Greater Salina Community Foundation and the Dane Hansen Foundation generously saw that this is not gonna take six months, it's not gonna take a year. We have a three-year grant of 130, $130,000 roughly over three years to facilitate this work. Our partners are also um, contributing money, contributing things, contributing labor to this project. So it's a much, it's a much bigger project than $130,000 in cash. But the $130,000 that the Greater Salina Community Foundation and the Dane Hansen Foundation contributed allowed us to go to somebody and for them to take us seriously. You know, like, yeah, well, we're doing this, we're doing this thing. So um, when you see Spark Artist Resource Exchange, that we will have a storefront downtown. We're not a retail shop, but we're a place for creative people to drop in. We're a place for people to have workshops, to have performances, or anything that, they can, that we can um, help them develop professionally and artistically. Um, is how we're going to be downtown. It's at 146 South Santa Fe, which is between Yarns, you know the Art Center Cinema? Then there's Santa Cruz Burritos. Then there's Yarns. Then there's Us. And then there's Dollar General on that side of the, that Santa Fe block. Um, you're more than welcome to drop in anytime. If you are an artist, if you think of yourself as a musician, a poet, um, any kind of creative maker, it's there for you too. We want to help you write grants. We want to help you find out where to exhibit your work. Um, at some point, maybe sooner rather than later, we want to help you find the materials that you need. Maybe you're a painter and you want to make big paintings, but you don't know how to make those stretchers. You know, those big wood frames with canvas stretched over them. You can come to us and we'll say, oh, I know somebody who can do that. Here, here's their phone number and maybe you can make a trade. You know, trade services or something like that. We have big plans. Um, I think of it as a 10 to 15 year project to change Salina, to push the culture of Salina in diverse ways towards solving problems while we're developing artists who have our creative thinkers, creative problem solvers, 
um, and can help our community become more than what it is. Who has questions or concerns or comments about anything today? Susan, have I forgotten something that you were going to say?